Hello, this is a video about AIS antennas, specifically this one, a J-Pole antenna, which I built myself out of scrap that we happen to have on board. It didn't cost me anything and uh, it's working really well. So it's an alternative to the usual way that you might do it, the way that we did it before, which is to have a splitter and use the VHF antenna, which is at the top of the mast. And that's worked well for us for five or six years. And then it's just started to get a bit glitchy. And I went through lots of different things. It's usually, you know, connections that are a problem. And yeah, sometimes it would work, sometimes not so well. So we're about to do an Atlantic crossing. We're in Bermuda at the moment and I needed it to work properly. So I thought I'd better delve in deeper and find out what the problem was and how to fix it. We've shown some of this in the episodes before. This is using a friend's VSWR meter. And you can see the figure's a bit high here, 2.56, but it should still work with that. But it wasn't. Sometimes it wasn't working at all. And of course, inconsistent faults, always the hardest ones to find. So it might just be a Duff uh, splitter unit here. So I'm going to take that out. This is the AIS unit, and that's the splitter unit, which allows you to use the same aerial at the top of the mast. Um, it's very difficult to put another aerial at the top of the mast because they've got to be sort of six foot apart and not in line with each other as well. You want one above the other. So difficult to do. So I'm going to make uh, an aerial that's going to go on the back arch. Um, I'm going to make it out of copper tubing, the copper tubing that we took out of the boat for the gas, uh, to change the gas pipe, which we did uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I've got this nice eight mil uh, copper pipe uh, and you can look up uh, J-Pole online. I'll put the uh, calculator in the, the description so uh, you can work it out. Uh, you know, for any frequency, it's, it's got to be tuned to exactly the right length. So it's, it's 162 megahertz for uh, AAS. So I've got the, the measurements there, need just under two meters of, of tubing. So I've got that outside, had to straighten it out a bit because it's all a bit bent up and painted on and a bit rubbish, but it'll be fine. So yeah, I've got to rewire this now so that uh, you've got the, that aerial goes straight to the uh, AAS unit uh, and I can take the splitter out completely and just take the, uh, the wire from the splitter into the back of the VHF. So both of those items should be much better as well. The VHF should, should be better if it hasn't got the splitter in line as well. So this one's coming out and I'll screw it all and uh, I have to go outside and finish off making my aerial. So once you put the frequency for AAS into the calculator, it will give you the exact dimensions. And so this is what you need to do, make it exactly to those lengths. And it's quite easy with the copper, you can just bend it round. So I'm using an old junction box with some bits of wood cuts to size so I can just screw it in there firmly and get it in place on the solo arch. So it's gonna go out here on the uh rail just above the solar panels so obviously not as high as being at the top of the mast but that should be okay I uh, should get a, still a good distance on those these j-pole aerials are supposed to be very good if they're tuned right and this is what we've got here so uh, it's just one piece of copper bent round I've cut this long one to the exact length that it should be this one's a little bit longer so I can tune it by cutting some bits off there but actually I think the main tuning is done by where you connect the uh, the coax wires so the center goes to this one and the uh, the outer to here so I'll just sort of clamp them on and, and check the uh, the SWR meter to get that as close to one as possible just moving this one around and uh, and then yeah just bolt them on when they're ready so yes no junction box put some wood in there so i can mount it hard i'm going to use this it's a clamp from mantis i actually bought it to uh to go on the binnacle because i thought i might want to mount uh, an ipad or something on there it's, it's just really good little design i'll show you over here so yeah if i show you you just uh, basically offer it up clamp it on it locks on and it's really solid so you can i can just screw this onto that uh, junction box and that'll hold it nicely the VHF will be better off too because that's now got its own aerial and doesn't have to go through a splitter. Okay, so time for a little bit of testing. Luckily, I did have this uh, piece of coax which uh, was run to the back here. That was originally for the big aerial which was supposed to be a Wi Fi booster. It never worked well. It's a digital yachts thing and it was just, it was rubbish really. And of course, I don't need it now because we've got Starlink, so that's fine. I've got to utilize the cable at least. Uh, I've cable tied it in just uh, temporarily to the right spot, 44 mil up. So let's clip this on, that's all bolted on, and uh, give it a test with a meter. So I'm clipping it in place for the testing, that's always the best thing to do if you can, but if not, just make sure you're away from any other bits of metals, especially aerials or anything vertical. The initial reading of 106 was actually much better than I expected. 
but I can probably get it better than that. So a little bit of tweaking. I will take a little bit off the top of the short area, which I did cut a little bit longer. Get it down to 103, that'll do nicely. So I drilled a couple of small holes in the copper so I could bolt a wire on that was crimped onto the coax. That's all good. I'm just gonna use, I've got this bit of wood that's gonna go in here and clamp this down. So uh, you're not gonna wobble on the uh, aerial there. And that should be good to go. I can mount that up there. I did find when I retested this that the figure had gone up slightly again. I think this was just having the wires crossing over the aerial like this was uh, putting some interference in. So I rerouted them like this, shortened them up, and that did the trick. It was back to a very good figure again. But of course, it's not about the figures, it's about what you can see. And we've populated the sound here in Bermuda with lots of boats, so that's good. And if we look further afield, the other side of the island, there's someone approaching the cut here. Uh, if you have a look, they are 9.3 miles away. Just want to check though that we're not getting this over internet and as you can see it is on local receiver, so that's good. So very glad that that seems to be working really well for the uh, Atlantic crossing. And of course, having another aerial down here is a good redundancy thing as well because uh, AAS VHF aerials are pretty much interchangeable. So if the worst would happen and we lost the rig, then I could just uh, take the plug out of the back of the VHF and uh, plug this aerial into it and have it working from there in an instant. So that's obviously uh, a good plus point as well. So I've got a few things to finish off here. You can see I've just got to finish off the wiring. I'll put these uh, couple of coils in here could do with a few more I think five or six uh, just to act uh, as a little bit of a choke in there to stop the uh, this coax where you know being used as a ground plane by the uh, by the system uh, if you had a ferrite uh, clip on ferrite you could probably do it It'd be more elegant with that to put one of those on I haven't got one on board at the moment so yeah I'll do a bit of fiddling around get this set in and we're tested out properly on the Atlantic crossing. Let's see how far away we can see a ship when we're uh, properly out at sea. So I hope you've enjoyed this film. Do do the usual like, subscribe, do all those good things and uh, see you in the next episode.